And a lot of comments get even worse than that, but YouTube filters out a lot of them that are just blatantly cussing me out. Some guy just repeatedly kept calling me Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs>
Once HCMC wins this settlement, we have to get this trending on Reddit with Wall Street bets. This will push the company to price we all would be very surprised at. Big eyeballs. This will be history. Ferris brings up a very interesting point about hype and how it can affect the share price. Now, 100%. I believe if they come out with news tomorrow that HCMC is going to win this lawsuit and they're going to get a hundred trillion billion dollars, then it is no doubt going to make a lot of headlines. It is no doubt going to be on Reddit. Everybody's going to be talking about it. It will make a lot of noise, which in turn is going to send that share price upward with a lot of momentum because hype gets baked into the stock and people get excited. Now, that share price could run up really, really quickly on any kind of news of HCMC winning. But it could also come tumbling back down just as quick. What I mean is there are a lot of people out there that feel like they are bag holders because they feel like, the, they feel like HCMC was a pump and dump stock, that there was a lot of hype that got, got baked into it, they bought in, now the shares are dropped, and they are just crossing their fingers and praying to the trading stock gods that this thing gets back to their average cost. So that way, they can sell out and they can be done with this chapter of their stock trading life. There are also those folks that are just trying to squeeze out whatever kind of profit they can because they are more bullish on the lawsuit than they are the company. So as soon as they get into any kind of profit range, you can see people start scalping profits, similar to what happened to Zometica not too long ago. You can see people start scalping profits and that share price come tumbling back down. Not saying it will. There are, there are times and instances where st stocks just keep on pushing up, just like IPOs and SPAC mergers. Oftentimes they will tumble and sometimes they will keep pushing back up. Airbnb is one of those that continue to push up, but that's another video. So I would just be careful around that news and play it how you how you want to. But personally, I would be very tempted to sell around that news time when if I saw a big, big, significant increase in that share price that I didn't believe was sustainable, I would sell at only when I felt like it wasn't sustainable. I would sell at that point and only to maybe buy back in whenever it fell back down to a more realistic place. And that and only because I was also bullish on HCMC over the long term because I believed in the company. I wasn't bullish on the lawsuit being its only catalyst. But I would just be very careful around the news and make sure you get your profits when you can. Or it keeps going to the moon and this is when I should probably insert some kind of rocket ship emoji. MG had this to say, I am an HCMC shareholder and used to work for Big Tobacco in North Carolina. PM will not settle. They do not settle most of the time and that's their game to run down the other side and drain them for money and time. The only thing I see them doing is agreeing to a licensing agreement so that HCMC gets X amount paid per Philip Morris vape products sold. Add on back pay for units already sold, and that's about all I see coming from Philip Morris, which could still be huge and significant. When this is one, all caps, when this is one, I think this stock will shoot up to the one cent to five cent range, and who knows if this gets uplisted, five to ten dollars a share will not happen just like Brokeman said. Insane thinking if you people believe that. Now, I thought this was a great point. I could 100, and I wish I, I really wish I'd have mentioned this in that video, but I could 100% see Philip Morse using that as a strategy, as a tactic. This is a mega company with billions. I could certainly see them just waiting out HCMC and trying to drain them and just intimidate them financially because they can keep this going forever. But can HCMC, no matter how much, I know they, they may have a little cash right now, but, but, but they ain't got Philip Morse cash. Why wouldn't Philip Morris just try to wait it out if they felt like if they felt like that that settlement or that lawsuit was going to be significant and they felt like they could wait them out and pay less just waiting them out then why not do that very thing that is a that if I was if I were HCMC that would be a very real concern of mine because I don't know I'm not an attorney I'm also not a financial advisor so I don't know exactly how many appeals and how long this thing could continue on and continue on, but I've been in, involved with court cases for a long time and things can go on forever. I know people that's gotten DWIs that's went on for, for dang near a decade. Next was Carlos Cortez. He said, 
Joint motions agreeing to extend deadlines has nothing at, at all to do with them working on a settlement at all. That is absurd. If what I said was taken like that, I apologize. That's not the way I meant. I I don't I didn't think that at all. I wasn't saying that as a factual thing. I was just saying that it was a possibility. They but it's a possibility they could sell any they could settle at any time. So if I said it like that and it was taken that way, I apologize. That's not the way I meant it. In fact, federal judges frowned upon contested opposition to continuances. The analysis of how the ICOQ by PM cannot be used without paralysis is the key. That is the key. Also, HCMC will not be allowed to show the jury that PEM has violated patents in the past. Not allowed. They may be able to show that in the second phase for punitive or exemplary damages if they win the first phase as to the violation of the patent. I thought that was interesting because the, the little time I've had in the courtroom, I was under the impression that Philip Morris would have to file a motion to keep from its past behavior being mentioned by HCMC. I thought you were allowed to show a pattern of behavior as long as that pattern of, be of behavior was provable and how it would relate to the case. But apparently, maybe not. Again, I'm not an attorney, but it, and it sounds like Carlos is. If he's not, maybe he should be because he sounds like he's uh, he's on the right track. But that's how that's my, that was my response to him is I thought that you had to file a motion for that. And here's what he said. Past conduct to prove current liability is 99.9999% forbidden absent some unheard of circumstance. If the lawsuit requests punitive damages or exemplary damages, and I'm not sure they are, and you didn't mention that aspect, which is true, <laughs> then they can show the past violations for the jury to determine a proper punishment at that point. And if you're an attorney watching this and you, you would like to weigh in on, on Carlos' statement, by all means, please do. It sounds like he knows what he's talking about, and which could be 100% correct. If you are thinking about starting your own YouTube channel, then make sure you have thick skin. Because if you ever mess up, misspeak, mispronounce, make any kind of error, it, it doesn't matter. People are quick to correct you in the comments. And not only are they quick to, but they're excited about it. They love it. There's no question. And, and sometimes you can just get outright attacked. For instance, the hillbilly talking in this video probably has a GED and a minimum wage job. Grow, <laughs> grow up, folks, and get real. <laughs> so a couple things about that comment. I take hillbilly as a term of endearment. I don't have a GED. I actually have my master's degree, but I am a high school dropout. Fun fact. I, my, my story is in my book, which is also in the description. Feel free to go buy as many copies as you would like. And no, I do not have a minimum wage job. I make around 50 cents to a dollar more. So there you have it. And a lot of comments get even worse than that, but YouTube filters out a lot of them that are just blatantly cussing me out. Some guy just repeatedly kept calling me Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Whatever. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you got a crazy comment, you may find yourself on one of my next videos. I hope those stocks stay green. I hope you stay safe. And I hope everyone out there takes care.